The 2009 Firestone Indy Lights season has been filled with big moments for J.R. Hildebrand. Oh, oh, we have contact. Anna Beatrice and J.R. Hildebrand. J.R. Hildebrand starts on pole and he wins it all here at Long Beach. Yeah, there you go. Today, Hildebrand will try to seize the points lead in a track he's grown to love. At the strike, it is J.R. Hildebrand, the 20-year-old win for the first time in Firestone Indy Lights. Speeds will reach nearly 190 miles per hour as the Firestone Indy Lights go over racing for the first time in 2009. The Kansas 100 is next. Welcome to Kansas Speedway. I'm Kevin Lee. We're getting set for the Firestone Indy Lights Kansas 100. This young man won last week at Long Beach. He won here last year, as we've documented. JR, you had a rough second race at St. Pete. You feel like you're back on track and ready to make a move towards the championship? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, you know, kind of a rough weekend at St. Pete, really. We just had some, some electrical problems with the car that we never really caught up to until after the second race was over. So, uh, you know, we kind of rebounded in Long Beach, got back on form on the road courses, and uh, had, had a pretty good qualifying effort yesterday. We qualified early. Car was a little bit loose, so, uh, you know, we ended up fourth on the grid here, but I think we've got the speed to be up front. So we'll see what we got later on. J.R. Hildebrand will start fourth. Now the men that will be calling this race. Let's check in with Mike King and Ari Leyendijk Jr. Well, Kevin, certainly wind will be one of the factors these drivers will be dealing with uh, this weekend. Ari Leyendijk Jr., you've raced here four times. When it comes to oval racing, experience is very important. Yeah, definitely. And uh, today it's very, very windy. So that's going to be another factor in our race. Experience definitely has its way of rising to the top here in the ovals. It being our first oval race, 13 drivers have never taken a start on an oval. You know, we're looking at the guys in the front have the experience. Let's we'll see if it pays off today. Well, rookies have dominated in the first three events of the season. In fact, four of the top five positions position and points belong to rookies, but veterans right now, looks like they're going to be the drivers to watch. Two of the top three spots belong to veterans on the grid, including Wade Cunningham, who's on pole, and he is downstairs with Kevin Lee. Wade, first, what kind of impact is the wind going to have? Uh, well, it was pretty windy yesterday, uh, but not, not this windy. Uh, I think it's going to make passing maybe easier into the headwind uh, and, and worse out. I think we're going to be in between gears a little bit, uh, especially to start with until the fuel load burns off. So, uh, you know, it doesn't really change my game plan, which is to try to stay out front. The first three races, you have not been where you have been accustomed to being. Do you feel like you are ready to now really make a move? Yeah, no, uh, you know, the first session here didn't go as well, but we were pretty quick in the second. We were second quickest, and then then we got the pole for qualifying. So that, that was a big confidence boost for the team and myself. And uh, definitely this is where we think we belong. So hopefully we're going to use this race as a turnaround and, uh, and go from here. Have a good one. Thank you. That's our pole sitter, Wade Cunningham. Yeah, no top 10 finishes for Wade Cunningham through these first three races. He is buried 16th in points. Junior Strauss, J.R. Strauss, I should say, uh, because of the fact that uh, he had that great weekend at St. Pete, continues to lead points. Jonathan Summerton, uh, J.R. Hildebrand, James Hinchcliffe, and... Daniel Harrington, the top five here as we get set to go green flag racing at Kansas Speedway. Let's go down to pit lane. Race fans, are you ready for those most famous words in motorsports? Please welcome back the commissioner of the Kansas Lottery, Joni Franklin, as she gives the command. Ladies and gentlemen, start your engine! So with engines started, we're just about set to go racing on a windy Sunday here at Kansas Speedway. 13 drivers of the 24 on the grid have never raced on an oval. Should be exciting as we get set to race here at Kansas. The Firestone Indy Lights Kansas 100 on Versus is presented by Firestone. With a tradition of innovation that spans over 100 years, Firestone is the first name in Indy racing. With Kevin Lee and Ari Landai Jr., I'm Mike King. Welcome back to the Firestone Indy Lights Kansas 100 on versus 24 cars set to make up the field for this, the fourth race on the 2009 Firestone Indy Lights schedule. Here's a look at the lineup. Wade Cunningham, the 2005 series champ, 
He had not qualified in the top 10 the first three races. He's on pole, Sebastian Saavedra. He is the only rookie and is starting in the top four. You've got Ana Beatrice, who is expected, of course, to contend. Mario Romancini with a good qualifying run. Charlie Kimball, James Davison. Martin Plowman, the rookie from Panther Racing. He and Pippa Mann, both uh, Panther, of course. Good oval setups, and we expect to see them run towards the front. Yakiman, Harrington, Guthrie, Panastini, and Summerton fill out the first 15 spots on the grid. Donoso, Strauss, the points leader back there in 17th. Mason, Philippe. And Mike Shantsev, who will go off 20th. And the rest of the field, Barbosa, Jay Howard, the 2006 champion, James Hinchcliffe, who is currently uh, fourth in points, did not take a speed, had a problem mechanically with the car. And Allie Jackson, we'll talk about the woes for Allie Jackson this weekend in just a couple of minutes. Uh, what about uh, Ari Leondike Jr., the keys to this one here today? First oval of the season. Well, we touched on it in the open. Uh, basically, experience is going to be a big part of today's race. So um, it's very windy out there today. Competition's going to be really close. Uh, you know, the, the guys have an edge who've, who've been here before, and all these conditions are really definitely a factor. So the second key would be um, timing the pass. This is a definite art, and a lot of the experienced drivers know how to do this. It's, it's very difficult to to not um, lose your momentum while timing a pass. So these guys, they all want to protect the bottom, but as you have said, uh, heard Wade say, you know, the wind's going to be a condition. You might hit the limiter. You might have an advantage on one side and not the other. So the next one is the conditions. Obviously, it's extremely windy here today. It's good to play a part um, the, with the wind affects the gearing, affects uh, how you can make passes happen. And last night it rained, so the track should be pretty slippery, be pretty green track, so all the grip that's built up is gone now. Okay, the field will now pull into their two by two row formation, 12 rows of two, as the pace vehicle will pull off this time by. Lights are off on the pace vehicle. Once again, race number four on the 2009 Firestone Indy Light Series schedule as we get set to drop the green flag on the Kansas 100 here on versus Wade Cunningham. He is the driver and it looks like there will be no start. So explain that, Ari, when you're ready to take the green flag, they, they have to look not just at, at the pole sitter, but they right. have to look at the entire field and how they are aligned coming to the green flag. They want the field to be organized two by two and if they feel like it's spread out or if it's not uh, you know, exactly to form, they want to make it equal for everybody. And obviously the, the inexperience of all these drivers is the first start of oval so they're going to try to line up try it again and see if we can get a green as tricky as road and street course racing is Ari, you mentioned timing that pass there's going to be a lot of overtaking in this one in fact we might see in the first five or six laps more passing among these drivers than they perhaps saw all weekend at long beach and look for anna beatrice in third place to try to take advantage and slip uh, uh, underneath wade here to try to get past the major because that could be key wade cunningham is on the gas and he will take the point as they come to the green flag this time, Ari, and it will be the veteran Wade Cunningham who will lead him into turn number one. Now look at Anna looking to the bottom right here. I don't think she's got it done, but you got JR who's really experienced working on the high side. Now keep in mind, JR Hildebrand uh, is uh, he's fighting for that championship lead coming off of the win last weekend at Long Beach. He's currently seven points back in the championship chase. As Anna right now going side by side uh, with JR Hildebrand into turn number three. Harrington making a really good move on the high side here. He's moving up the field. Sebastian Saavedra now. And let's keep an eye on him in the other AFS Andretti green car. He has never raced on an oval, yet he runs second right now. Had a very strong qualifying effort as well as he started on the outside of the front row. Yeah, he, him and Wade are pretty much gapping the field right now. Anna and uh, Hildebrand had a little battle here, and you can see the, the top two lining up and moving away from the field. Let's see if uh, JR can close this gap. The draft is very important on a 1.5-mile super speedway like Kansas Speedway. And Ari, when you talk about the draft, what is Sebastian Saavedra feeling in the car as he runs just off the rear wing of that Lucas Oil machine. Right now you can see him kind of head to the outside. He's going to get more air on the front wings and this will definitely help with grip level. Oh, we have oh, an accident. Yeah. Problem accident. early. That's a big hit. And Jesse I've... Mason it looks like. We will get that confirmed here momentarily, but that a lot wow. of damage to the front of that car. You see the nose laying over. Uh, we've had an incident earlier in practice uh, on Saturday where we saw Allie Jackson get into the wall, uh, but uh, it, it is Jesse Mason, and we're also being told the 36 is off the track. So the 36 car Richard also Philippe, involved yeah. with Richard Philippe, and Philippe, Philippe was, involved. was involved with that incident yesterday. Yeah. So uh, yeah. you know we'll have to get a replay on what happened, but oh man, that's a lot of damage on Jesse Mason's car. Philippe's also done for the day. 
So working the third of 67 laps here at Kansas Speedway, a two-car incident involving Jesse Mason and Richard Philippe. And we can only hope right now, as the Delphi safety team is there very quickly to tend to Jesse Mason, the Canadian driver. Let's just hope that he's okay, Ari, right, because uh, any time you see that sort of front end damage, uh, injuries to the feet are certainly a concern. Right now, Wade Cunningham, the veteran out in front, Sebastian Saavedra were in second, Hildebrand, Beatrice, and Roman Cini fill out the top five here at Kansas Speedway. Welcome back to the Firestone Indy Lights. Kansas 100 on versus still under caution as the cleanup is just about wrapped up for the incident involving Jesse Mason and Richard Philippe. Ari Lion Dyke Jr., tell us what happened. Well, basically here, if you look in the back of your screen, we'll highlight it for you. Um, there you go. We'll have Jess, that's Jesse Mason spinning right there. If you notice, the three cars ahead of him are all kind of fanned out, so he might have just lost the air on his front wings and uh, caused the, the car to spin. And here we have uh, another view of, uh, you know, after the incident, but it looks like Richard Philippe might have been a bystander there. Just like the practice incident uh, where Richard Philippe got caught up with the, uh, another Guthrie Meyer racer, Allie Jackson. So it's been a tough weekend for Guthrie Meyer and a tough weekend for... Richard Philippe as well. Jesse Mason, uh, 24 years old, uh, out of Niagara Falls, Ontario. Good news is he's out of the car and he is okay. So despite the hard hit, uh, Ari, the car did its job, and Jesse Mason uh, will uh, race another day as we get Savager set. Savager making a really good move here and a really good restart. He might even get it done. He got it done. Wow. In turn number one on the restart, Sebastian Savager may have never raced before Ari on an oval, but man, he handled that restart like an old pro. That was a great move. You know, Wade Cunningham one of the most experienced guys here. Obviously, the pole sitter has the advantage on a restart. Now we look at uh, Romancini making a move on the bottom. And Daniel Harrington on the high side, three wide through turn number three as uh, some great racing breaking out behind the leaders. Anna Beatrice there running in front of Romancini. It's right now Sebastian Saavedra, the rookie, out in front. But here comes the old veteran, Wade Cunningham going side by side, Ari, and this is what oval racing's all about. Exactly. What a great view here. Here we're side by side on the back straightaway. It looks like Wade has a little bit of momentum, but the bottoms are obviously the shorter way around, so it's going to be the advantage. And you actually hear, heard Wade right there hit the rev limiter, so they are fighting with the gearing here with the wind conditions. We talk about Wade being the old veteran. He's all of 24 years old. Won the championship back in 2005. Let's hear uh, Richard Philippe. Uh, Kevin Lee, uh, how did he see the incident uh, with Jesse Mason? Richard, first, we're glad to see that you're okay. You've been caught up in bad luck two days in a row now. What happened from your perspective? Uh, the car in front of me just kind of lost it, and, and I had really nowhere to go. I was building my confidence slowly, you know, but uh, you know, that's the way it goes. I was in the same situation that the, the, the car in front of me was yesterday. Uh, I was lucky enough that there was nobody that close to me, but we still came together, and today I was the guy giving it. Uh, so it's unfortunate, but that's motorsports, you know. Glad to see you're okay, and we'll see you at Indy. Thank you. See you there. That's Richard Philippe. His brother Nelson, by the way, was just back here, and he was confirmed in the last few days for a ride for the Indianapolis 500 with HVM Racing. We've got a great battle up front, Kevin. That is for certain, as right now Sebastian Saavedra has gone back to the point, and here comes his teammate, J.R. Hildebrand, right now as he's trying to close, but Ari, he loses momentum there in four. Got a big understeer getting, trying to get uh, underneath Wade there. Oh, yeah, another huge crash. That's Allie Jackson. That is Allie Jackson. This is a brand oh, new, oh, and another car trying down. to avoid it has gotten upside down. Oh, so wow. another big incident as Allie Jackson had already made contact. Another car slowing. That might be Sergey Mokshansev, yep, and I exactly. believe it is. So Mokshansev goes oh, to the high out of the side. Car. How about that? Wow, he jumped out of that car quick. So the ride of a lifetime for Sergey Mokshansev. As he is down on one knee, but Ari, he's, he's okay. Out of the car very, very quickly and after a, a frightening know, ride. And that's definitely adrenaline. You know, it's, it's, if something like that happens, you just want to get out. And uh, actually, that's the number, is that the number three car? It's hard to tell right here from this perspective, but big accident. Um, we'll have to see what happened, but man, that is just so unfortunate for these guys. First oval race for all three of these drivers, and they come away here with a huge crash, which uh, definitely does not help the confidence. So as we are working lap number 15 of the 67 that will make up the Kansas 100, a three-car incident appeared to be touched off by the initial contact by Allie Jackson. Allie Jackson. And then we saw Sergei Mokshansev get airborne as he went to the high side. The car flipped over. 
And then we saw that Rodrigo Barbosa also involved in this one. So a three-car incident. And uh, all right, this is and, and there's Ali Jackson, the, the 59 brand new race car, all right, to replace the one that was heavily damaged on Saturday in practice. And that's you know sometimes when there's an accident in front of you. you if you don't have experience, you, you have to really look ahead, and that's one of these things here. We, You know, I think we do have a replay, so let's check it out. My goodness, uh, and all of these drivers making their first starts on ovals. There's the initial hit by Ali Jackson, Ari, and what comes next is uh, scary indeed for Sergei Markchansev. It looks like, um, you know, he, he, we don't really see the first part of that, but this next accident happens a lot later, so it, it obviously was yellow already, so maybe Barbosa slowed down, and uh, Makshansev did didn't see that coming and then went over the back of him. Um, that Here's could another be one of those angle. incidents. Here's another angle from outside yeah, as the cars approach turn number four. And Allie Jackson, big oh. contact, and it, it looked like, as you mentioned, Makshansev, it, it, it appeared he climbed up and over the rear tires right. of, of Barbosa as uh, perhaps Barbosa saw the incident, got, got on the, uh, off the gas, on the brakes, or at least slowed down his momentum drastically. But uh, perhaps Makshansev uh, simply did not see Barbosa slowing in time to, to be able to avoid that incident. Now, we have three tools in the car. We have our, our dash lights, which go yellow. We have our radio, obviously the flag man. So we have all those, those three tools to kind of go off of when the thing goes yellow. When the track goes yellow, you just need to release off the gas pedal. You know, obviously assess the situation. The spotter will tell you what's going on. And that might have been an incident where, um, you know, he didn't really get the, the news quick enough or he didn't react to the yellow flag quick enough. Well, for anyone who does not believe that oval racing is a different monster as compared to street and road course racing, all right, this is a perfect example. All three of these drivers involved. In fact, the first Five drivers involved in incidents here, all rookies to, to oval racing. Jesse Mason, and actually, uh, let's give Jesse a bit of a nod because he has made some starts, but he's been away for a while. But Jesse Mason and Richard Philippe in the first incident that, that occurred as we were working lap number three. And now here is uh, we were working uh, lap number 14, Ali Jackson, Sergey Makshansev, and uh, Barbosa there. Those three involved in, in, in three pure rookies on ovals. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, this is an experience for them, and, and hopefully they can walk away away from this one without any injuries and, and be back in the next event and, and they'll definitely learn from this. Well, for the Guthrie Meyer team, uh, tough weekend, tough weekend as uh, they have not one but two drivers involved as uh, you see the Delphi safety team. Uh, look at all the debris scattered. I mean, this was a huge accident. And, um, you know, it doesn't look like the tub is damaged on uh, Allie Jackson's car, which is fortunate because he obviously had uh, the tub is, is the area that surrounds you and it's uh, the most expensive piece of, uh, of the car. So looks like that's not damaged. Yet. Well, this is obviously what happened during the race today. Here's what happened during practice on Saturday as Richard Philippe looks like he's made a great save here and you would have thought that Allie had plenty of time to get out of the way but instead Allie Jackson clips the front left wing on Philippe's car and he winds up Ari nearly doing a header in, into the wall that was almost a, a flush hit and he, he suffered some uh, you know bruising and obviously a contusion in his foot and that's one of those instances where you know you're, you're watching the guy spin and instead of looking at where you want to go you're fixated on the object and he was definitely fixated on Richard Philippe's car, and unfortunately, they made contact. Well, of course, before competing on oval tracks in Firestone Indy Lights competitions, drivers must pass a, a rookie test first. We followed the driver from Belfast, Northern Ireland, Allie Jackson from Guthrie Meyer Racing in Homestead, to see what goes into passing that oval test. Good morning. Welcome. Oval racing is about making small, precise movements not jerking from one side to the other. Obviously, for many reasons, it's totally different than road courses. Thanks very much, have a good day. Today was a big day to get my rookie pass pass. Green, track is green. Four cars on the track right now, one's coming off of pit lane. First thing you have to do is go out and get comfortable, taking a high line, and then get flat. A lot of it's in your head. You don't stop yourself and just go out and hold it flat. Once you do it, once you can do it a hundred times. 59, I advise him not to pinch. Uh, in that situation, he was pinching the, the 28 car pretty tight to the bottom, and if 28 washes out, 59's going to be uh, in the fence. Yeah, well, 
last race, isn't it? You have to run close. So now the driver's got a problem with it, move over. The big thing for me was um, not so much the speed, that's just takes wide your eyes to get up to that extra bit of speed. But it was just trying to keep the smooth hands. Coming from a road racing background, that's quite an aggressive driving style from like throwing the car over the curbs and etc. So just trying to be super smooth on an oval. Because at them speeds, the slightest movement can upset the car, you know. That was my biggest thing I had to get used to. Smooth hands, eyes up the racetrack. Really good line in one and two there. Really good line. Callie, buddy, congratulations. You just passed your rookie pass. One thing running on your own, and there's nothing running in traffic. I'm actually equipped to the traffic quite well. I enjoy, enjoy the dicing and the racing, so it took a little bit of time. But once you get up to speed of half a day, then you're flat, and then you can work on drafting for other people. That's, that's where it's all at. Any challenge is great, whether it be in the gym or at home or whatever. I'm up for any challenge. Well, we are happy to report that uh, all three drivers, Jackson, Mark Shantsev, and Barbosa, all out of their cars. They are okay. Delphi safety team on the scene with the cleanup of this big three-car incident. 18 of 67 being shown complete. Sebastian Saavedra leads Wade Cunningham, Mario Romancini, J.R. Hildebrand, and Anna Beatriz here at Kansas Speedway. Welcome back to the Kansas Speedway for the Kansas 100 and Firestone Indy Lights. I'm Kevin Lee. Sebastian Saavedra is our leader. We're under our second caution of the day. The second, Allie Jackson was involved. That was a nasty hit, especially behind you. Tell me uh, what you saw from your perspective. Well, I think um, I was the first car to spin going into the corner. It might have caused a, a chain reaction. I'm, I'm not too sure what happened behind me. You're okay? Yeah, fine. Just a bit knocked about, but not racing. Okay, Allie Jackson, good to see you're okay. Involved in a couple of hits this weekend. Mike? 20 years old from Belfast, Northern Ireland, and a shame to, to see him involved in not one but two incidents this weekend, hoping to build on that sixth place finish last week at Long Beach. But as he mentioned, Ari, that's racing, particularly on an oval. Yeah, for all these rookies here, uh, seeing all those tire marks on the car upside down, it's got to make you nervous. Four of the 13 rookies in the 24 car field are out of this one. Uh, we are happy to report that everyone is okay. Another good looking restart for Sebastian Saavedra, and right now, our second place driver. And that that, of course, is Wade Cunningham just trying to hold off another rookie, Mario Romancini. It looks like uh, Wade's not really getting good restarts here. I don't know if uh, he chose the wrong gears for uh, coming up to the green, but Romancini doing a great job here in third place. Wade is now back up to full song, and uh, here comes Daniel Harrington on the outside as he tries to challenge Anna Beatriz, uh, running just in front of Beatriz. J.R. Hildebrand, the winner last week, led every lap, Ari, at Long Beach, and certainly J.R., who won here a year ago, has a lot of momentum on his side. Exactly, and, uh, you know, we're looking at Daniel Harrington. He actually started 12th as we take Roman Senior. He took a look to the outside, but uh, couldn't get it done, so he slotted back in. But uh, th this type, this group right here of six cars is uh, pretty close. Um, looking at, uh, right now it's kind of settling in. Everyone's kind of feeling out their cars after that yellow. By the way, Jesse Mason, who was involved in the first incident as we were working lap three, Jesse has been cleared from the medical center, did have precautionary x-rays, but he is okay. On board with Wade Cunningham, side by side, as we saw Roman Cini trying to pull alongside. Nari, we talk a lot about the draft when you, when you run nose to tail, but there's also a draft to talk about on super speedways when you're running side by side. Well, it's not as prominent, obviously, the, the draft knows the tail is big and he made that move and he did have enough time to slot back in and that's just one of those things he timed it well he tried he couldn't get the momentum built up enough to get around so he had time enough to come back in and slot into that draft so now we're looking at wade pull up on Saavedra and make nice a run he's got a good run here side by side those wheels locked together wade cunningham on the high side Saavedra on the low side and roman Cini. he's going to get a, in, into this battle as well as uh, they pull up great shot from wade cunningham's car here the lucas oil machine he's on the limiter here and you see roman Cini pulled right behind Saavedra, and that's helping Saavedra. it's pushing him forward and it's actually now you can see Saavedra has the advantage so Saavedra on the inside, that obviously is uh, the shortest line around this racetrack. But Ari, if you can get the momentum built on the outside, uh, you're going to be able to equal speed-wise what they're doing. And in fact, uh, we're talking about speeds approaching 190 miles an hour, right at 186. And look at that yeah, four-car back. Yeah, this is a great group here. we got two experienced drivers on the top, two rookies on the bottom. So that's pretty interesting. And, and i got a bank on Wade and Anna. Oh, we have a spin behind us, Gustavo Jachman. And he saved it. How about that? that 
Augusta, and that is rare right there to save it, and uh, the yellow will come out, but Gustavo Jakoman makes a great save, and that Ari on a super speedway is something very rare to see a driver come out of, of a turn four at, at a super speedway like Kansas that was amazing, after having gotten yeah. it sideways like a sprint car on a dirt track. Here's a look at, as we watch, they were going side by side. It was he and Jay Howard. He's on the high side here, and he just loses it. Wow, he just missed Kimball. That was actually Kimball on the low side. Just clears the wall. He has a little bit left front wing damage here. Whew. You can kind of see. And um, here we get another look at it. My goodness. And he came oh so close to the outside wall there. And uh, you're right. It looks like uh, the uh, the end plate uh, on that front left wing is damaged just a bit. Uh, but Ari, it does not appear to be. It, well, it, it does look a little bit lower now. It, it looks like that's going to be significant enough for him to have to come to pit lane and probably necessitate a, a nose change, don't you think? If they're very quick with the nose change and it's under yellow, they can actually get into the pits without losing a lap. But this might not be enough damage for him to come in. The officials, if it is dragging on the ground, it might be a safety issue. They might have to bring him in. Yeah, and once again, uh, it uh, it was Charlie Kimball that uh, was uh, running side by side uh, with him. So uh, he's having a good race. He he sits eighth right now, and uh, obviously this is his first oval race as well. So he's doing a good job. He and Jay Howard, uh, of course, uh, running uh, the the identical Palm Beach International Raceway paint scheme. So uh, as we take a look, Sebastian Saavedra still out in front. Wade Cunningham uh, currently runs second. Uh, Third place uh, to Ana Beatriz, Mario Romancini is fourth, J.R. Hildebrand is fifth. Uh, sixth place to Daniel Harrington, then Martin Plowman, Charlie Kimball, Pippa Mann. Here's our Firestone Indy Lights trivia question. Name the current Firestone Indy Lights owner who drove in the first Kansas 100. We'll let you think about that for a few minutes. The driver or the owner, the current owner that drove in the first Firestone Indy Lights 100 here. And Great battle Kansas. here. Yep, yep. Yeah, we so. got Romancini on the top. Uh, he's working, the, he's been on the bottom pretty much all race. Now he's working the top as Anna goes to the low side. Interesting how Saavedra and Cunningham were good enough on that start to break away from Romancini and, and Anna. I mean, that's a that's a big break uh, here here on this on this restart lap. You saw Anna and Romancini get side by side, and that definitely co killed the momentum. So now you see Anna's actually being pulled by the draft. She's actually being pulled up to Wade. So now she's going to have the momentum when they get there. Let's see if she can use it. Romancini on the high side of Anna Beatrice as they'll go side by side. You talked about the fact that Anna was running on the high side earlier. She has swapped places with Romancini going to the goes to the low side heading into to three and you know the drivers have a few different tools they can use in the race oh look at this oh we try to make a move but it's tucked back in they have a few different tools they can use in the race we have the front roll bar the real roll bar and the weight jacker which uh changes cross weight so we have a lot of different tools and a lot of the experienced drivers will be better at managing those tools and making the car better over a long run so let's see if weight can challenge Savedra here for the lead. Great move. Side by side, Cunningham on the outside. Savedra, the 18-year-old from Bogota, Colombia, on the inside. This is the battle for the lead. Look at his hands. Look at his hands. Wade had to lift. Savedra got a little bit of understeer, almost slid up into Wade, and he had to lift. Savedra holds off the veteran for now. Let's end. We've got oh. another incident. Pablo so, Donoso. So Pablo Donoso, the veteran, former winner in Firestone Indy Lights competition, finds himself in the wall as Sean our third caution. And Sean Guthrie just missed it. So Sean Guthrie manages to avoid the situation, but that's bad news for Pablo Donoso. Both uh, Brian Stewart cars out of the race, you know, two Guthrie Meyer cars, and now a third one affected. So those two teams are having really tough days. And there you see the Delphi safety team working over the Niagara Falls car. And it's been a busy day already for the Delphi safety team as uh, Ari, here's a look at, at what happened to Pablo Donoso. Here's on the high side. Uh, everything looks to be good. He might have come down on Hinchcliffe. Yep, there we go. He came down a little too much on Hinchcliffe, actually damaged Hinchcliffe's wing. Oh, there's an oil fire. That's uh, whoa. looks dramatic, but... Sean Guthrie also caught up in that. And but he missed him. He, yeah, did, exactly. he didn't make any contact. And one of the uh, Palm Beach International Raceway cars, it was either Kimball or Howard, that got through there unscathed as well. I wonder if when they touched wings, if it cut down that left rear. That's definitely possible. That, that happens so fast. Those wings, those front end plates are so sharp, actually. They, they've changed them over the years to, to round the front of them, but they still cut a tire pretty easily. And, and that's one of those situations where Pablo didn't give Hinchcliffe enough room. Hinchcliffe tried to go as low as he could, but he was alongside that white line 
line, and you can't cross that white line. So definitely not Hinchcliffe's fault. Pablo uh, just needed to give him more room. Turn four has uh, claimed a lot of race cars already. Let's go down to pit lane and Kevin Lee. Rafa Matos was in the car that is leading right now last year. He was the champion in Firestone Indy Lights, and now he is in the IndyCar series for Lusso Dragon Racing. How did this series prepare you for the big cars? I think prepares really well. Uh, you know, the dynamics of the weekend, uh, working, working with the setup of the car, and uh, the whole environment is very similar, so I think... You know, it's a, it's a perfect step for Indy cars. Good luck the rest of the season in Indy cars, and especially in the Indianapolis 500. That's Rafa Matos. Sebastian Saavedra is our leader. 35 of 67 are complete here at Kansas Speedway. You're watching Firestone Indy Lights on Versus. I want to remind you that a big month of May comes up here on Versus. Pole day, second day of qualifying, third qualifying day, and then, of course, bump day. You see the dates, you see the times, wall-to-wall -wall coverage as we get set for the 93rd running of the Indianapolis 500. Of course, Carb Day and the Big Freedom 100 comes your way uh, the Friday before the race. We hope you'll join us right here on Versus Restart. Sebastian Saavedra with 40 of 67 laps being shown. Complete good restart here for Saavedra as he gets about a three-car length cushion between himself and second place Wade Cunningham. Anna Beatrice and Mario Romancini. Those four drivers, uh, Ari, those have been the guys out front uh, exactly. since, since the drop of the green. And Wade's making a move here in the, in the headwind, so let's see if it pays off. See, he actually that actually was not a good move because now Anna's on his low side. So let's see if Anna can improve the position. Roman Cini trying to decide, do I go with Anna or do I go with Wade? I would stay low. You know, go where the momentum is. Right now, Anna's got the momentum with that uh, really good restart that she had. Wade is struggling on the restarts. I mean, it might be a question of gearing or the headwind. By the way, I want to let you know that Pablo Donoso okay after that incident that brought out the third caution flag. James Hinchcliffe looks like the car is going to be okay to continue. But Sean Guthrie, he uh, wound up on pit lane and he is... Uh, out of uh, out of this one, or has he rolled back out? It uh, could be that he has rolled, that he is he is finished. We are being told. Yeah, so. that was Gustavo Jakman slow on the on the apron there, so he might have a problem. And uh, Jakman with the save uh, a few laps earlier, but out in front, it's Sebastian Cervedra. He is 18 years old, and uh, he comes to us from Bogota, Colombia, where last year Ari in German F3 he picked up three wins. He comes here as a heralded driver, and at, at 18, uh, there there are an awful lot of expectations on this young man. Right, and Roman Senior right now looking really good, making a move on Wade Cunningham for third. That was actually the team that won this race last year with J.R. Hildebrand, so they're having a strong showing here. Well, Mario Romancini, 21 years old, as you mentioned, also a rookie out of Sao Paulo, Brazil. Last year competed in the World Series by Renault, that uh, Ray Hall Letterman Anderson racing machine. Sam Schmidt Motorsports, though, has been strong here this weekend and continues to run those two veterans in the top four. We're talking about both Wade Cunningham uh, and, and of course, uh, we're also uh, talking about Anna Beatrice as we see uh, someone running behind Wade who very nearly got into the wall. 17th through 20th, as uh, you see on the right oh, side of your wide. screen, three wide. Jonathan and uh, Ari Summerton on the top here. Uh, oh, look at that. And then you saw that car get loose right in the middle, and, and that was just a factor of being in that three wide battle. Summerton with a new spot, uh, sponsor, Doug Mockett, who sponsored his car for this event. He didn't even know if he was going to be here, so struggling with the budget a little bit. Hopefully, he can move up the field. Yeah, Mocket and company came on board uh, to keep uh, Jonathan Summerton's uh, championship hopes alive. They're part of the furniture industry. They make all sorts of things for the furniture and building industry. So uh, great to have them on board. Uh, that uh, RLR, RLR Anderson racing machine is Jonathan Summerton. Right now, though, uh, going to have to pedal pretty hard to get himself back in this one as he has currently shown ninth. Meantime, up front, Sebastian Saavedra. And uh, you also see Anna Beatriz. Anna, of course, a veteran. She has won on an oval, uh, contends for the championship this season after contending as a rookie last year. She's uh, she's definitely coming on strong here with uh, the 46th lap of this race, and she's setting up Saavedra. As we see Romancini really working on Wade Cunningham. It looks like Wade and Romancini may have lost touch a little bit with the leaders, and we really need to stay in the draft here, because once they're too far out front, you'll never catch them back unless we get a yellow. J.R. Hildebrand was strong early on, Ari, as we are on board once again with Wade Cunningham. He and Roman 
Mancini, but J.R. Hildebrand has faded to ninth place. So Hildebrand having some problems. Daniel Harrington trying to work on the 15 car. That is Pippa Mann, I believe, uh, and uh, make that Martin Plowman, who is running uh, just in front. Uh, and Daniel Harrington making just his third start on an oval. Right now faring pretty well out there in that blue car fielded by Brian Hurdle Autosport. You know, he's, he finds himself right now in sixth position. He started 12th. And right now, if you can look in front of them, the, the pack is pretty far ahead. If I were him, I would tuck behind behind Plowman and try to catch the group ahead of him because right now running side by side is definitely not going to be to your benefit. So work with the driver as opposed to working against them going try trying to, to, to make the pass now try to catch up to, to the guys that using the draft as an exactly. advantage for both guards. Yeah right now it's you know we got a long way to go in this race. Why not just work together, get to the lead group and then duke it out. Yeah, so you've got to wonder, Daniel Harrington only making his third start on an oval, is that just simple inexperience, the fact that he's not realized? Oh, oh and Ana Beatrice, a great save oh. by Ana Beatrice in turn number two. That was amazing. And actually, that was turn four where Anna made that save. And we have seen two great saves, but Anna's going to lose a lot of momentum here. And here comes Cunningham and Romancini. Wow, that was amazing. Wow. I, she got so sideways through that corner. She have definitely had earned her salary right there. She did great on saving that car. We saw Gustavo Jakobin make a great save earlier. You don't see that very often, and we've seen it twice here today at Kansas Speedway, Ari. Yeah, it looks like she pretty much kept her foot in it and got the thing sideways, wow. but lost the momentum, obviously. Now she's dropped back to fourth. But she'll be definitely working on her tools in her car to make her car better. Yeah, so how sideways can you get a Firestone Indy Lights car at 185 miles an hour and save it? Well, it looks like we're going to have a look-see right here. Here's the replay. Anna Beatrice in that healthy choice car. And Ari, oh, oh wow. that's a save and a half. Yeah, that doesn't look too, uh, I guess, from the outside looking in. But I can tell you right now as a driver, that was huge. Wade Cunningham on the inside of Mario Romancini. This is the battle for second place is Sebastian Saavedra. He's trying to check out a little bit. Yeah, now he's got some breathing room. He can relax a little bit. If he can just get out a little bit further out front, he'll break the draft, and then that would be key in this race. If he can break the draft and get about 20 car licks in front, he might be looking good here to the end unless we get a yellow. Got to be impressed with what Romancini is doing here in his first oval start. The same certainly to be set for Sebastian Saavedra as he is now looking to possibly win in his first oval start. Roman Cini, though, he's not giving up on this one. He still has sight of, of one, Wade Cunningham, but of the leader, Saavedra, just up ahead. And here he comes again to the outside. And this is perfect for Saavedra. He's looking in his mirrors right now, seeing these two guys battle and going, great, run side by side, then I can get away. J.R. Hildebrand has dropped all the way back to 14th. Meantime, Daniel Harrington battling once again with Martin Plowman. Here comes Harrington, and now he has tucked in behind. See, so look now, maybe Hurd has been on the radio and tell him, you know what, just tuck in behind. You guys will be quicker together if you just stay nose to tail. And they're actually catching the second group ahead of him. J.R. Hildebrand, as we mentioned, uh, this is a guy who dominated last week at Long Beach, Kevin Lee, but he is now faded to 14th. a tire going down. So that's the concern right now in the AFS pit. They're not certain, but there's concern about that tire going down for Hildebrand. Mario Romancini now battling Wade Cunningham side by side into turn number three. This is the battle for second place. Yeah, this is definitely, Romancini wants to get by, but he's tried now five or six, seven times, and it hasn't worked. And meanwhile, Saavedra is just walking away with it. Well, there's the 26 uh, on pit lane, J.R. Hildebrand. So apparently, Kevin Lee, you're exactly right. The tire that is going down, forcing him to pit lane, and that's going to be difficult in terms of his championship aspirations, at least trying to come out of Kansas with the championship lead. Now, last Not year going to happen for him. Exactly. Last year, he had such a good race here. We battled. He won the race. And uh, this is really unfortunate. Right rear tire gone down. And, uh, or sorry, left rear. They're changing both tires, but he'll lose a lap. Well, we uh, asked you earlier our Firestone Indy Lights trivia question. Current team owner that competed here in 2002 in the first Kansas 100. Can you name that Firestone Indy Lights owner? Gary Peterson. Formerly a driver, now a championship team owner. AFS, Andretti Green Racing. You know Gary well, driving for him last year, you and Rafa Matos. Sebastian Saavedra, Wade Cunningham, Mario Romancini putting on a show here at Kansas Speedway. Along with Ari Leyendijk Jr. and Kevin Lee, I'm Mike King. Welcome back to the Firestone Indy Lights Kansas 100 on Versus. Yet another caution, sixth of the afternoon. At the line, as you see them coming across, start finish, 65 laps are complete. Ari, once again, the problem 
in turn three and four, and here's uh, what brought out this six caution flag. The car on the top here, number 63, Dylan Battistini, he's working on Prendeville. It looks like he just gets loose, and he collects Pippa Man. And this has got to be a factor of the wind. We've seen so many accidents in this same corner. And uh, basically, they have a tailwind on the back straightaway. And then when they turn into the corner, they're going to get understeer. So they're going to add more steering input. And then what happens was, if you come around the corner, you're going to get wind on the front nose. It's going to pin the nose. It's going to swing the back end around. And, you know, we saw Anna get loose. We saw Gustavo get loose. We've seen all these incidents in turns three and four. And uh, it's unfortunate. Pippa Man had nowhere to go here, though. Ari, no, certainly she... not her fault. Simply caught up in, in Dylan's incident. Exactly. Caught up in his in incident. There's no way to slow down in that amount of time. There's nowhere to, for her to go. Okay. So uh, we... Um... We'll come to the line, completing 66, and we await to, to find out how this one's going to finish out, Kevin Lee. Looks like it looks like we're going to finish under yellow. There's been no indication down here. The wind, by the way, has been heavy all day. It started at 19 miles per hour out of the south, gusting to 33, but right at the time when uh, Anna Beatrice lost it, had her moment. The wind had just picked up. It also has continued to gust since then. It is significantly uh, windier than it was at the beginning. It's getting cooler. Junior Strauss said when he had his moment, I have no idea what happened. It just snapped. I think it was probably the wind, and we are going to finish under yellow with the white flag display. Well, the AFS team won a week ago at Long Beach, and they're going to win this one under yellow, and it's going to be a rookie, Ari Leondike Jr. Believe it or not, we talked about experience, but Sebastian and Saavedra, all 18 years old, he's going to wind up taking the checkered flag in his first oval start. Talk about a great day. I mean, he had a really good restart, which put him into the lead. He basically controlled the pace, and now we see him with the victory. The next stop for him will be the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. That's going to be his second oval race. And, of course, the IndyCar Series also heading to Indy for the 93rd running of the 500-mile race, the Indianapolis 500. Pole day comes your way Saturday, May the 9th, with coverage starting at noon Eastern time, a full slate of coverage right here on Versus. Hope you're going to be with us from beginning to end of the month of May, one of the greatest traditions in all of motorsports. Delphi safety team tried as hard as they could to get this two-car incident cleaned up. A lot of fluid on the racetrack. It just wasn't going to happen. Sebastian Saavedra in tow there behind the Honda Pace car, and he's got the fist in the air, and there are the twin checkers as Sebastian Saavedra will come across the line as the leader. So that's back-to-back -back wins for the AFS team, and we talked about yeah. Gary Peterson. That's great. He was here in 2002 for the first Firestone Indy Lights event. By golly, today he wins it as a team owner. Shoot, I thought definitely uh, JR would have the advantage here in that team, but Saavedra has been quick all uh, obviously the whole event, and you see him come away with the win with that awesome restart, so I'm really happy for him. So the last restart, let's give him the nod, because uh, he absolutely uh, got uh, Wade Cunningham on that one as Sebastian Saavedra will win it. Wade Cunningham winds up second. Mario Romancini is third. Anna Beatrice is fourth. And Martin Plowman winds up with his best finish as he is fifth. There is the rest of the top ten as the Kansas Indy Lights 100 is in the book. The Firestone Indy Lights Kansas 100 on Versus is presented by Firestone. With a tradition of innovation that spans over 100 years, Firestone is the first name in Indy racing. Two rookies wind up in the top three. Sebastian Saavedra and Mario Romancini go 1-3. Wade Cunningham, of course, is second. Anna Beatrice, Martin Plowman, you see the drivers filling out the top 20. Only 14 of the 24 starters finish this one. Richard Philippe winds up last. Let's go to victory lane to Kevin Lee. The 18-year-old from Columbia, Sebastian Saavedra, climbing for his race car. Two in a row for AFS. Andretti Green Racing, his first start on an oval, puts him in victory lane. Sebastian climbed down here. Tell me about the uh, the restarts. That's what got you the win, and you had to hold off weight on several. Yeah, I think I'm very happy. I can't believe it. Uh, it's been great. I think the restart thing uh, was perfect timing for uh, for every restart. And uh, I don't know. Uh, I just got uh, the perfect timing behind weight. I think uh, I was able to to pull my my gear a little bit faster than him, getting into the first corner. From then on, it was just as history. The car was great. I think the car the the guys did a great job with the car. It was was just unbelievable. Parts and Firehawks were unbelievable during the whole race. I didn't have any problem with them, so I'm just happy. Like this is for the guys. Congratulations. 
Heading to Indianapolis with a win, Sebastian Saavedra. And he'll head there third in points on the strength of this win. Jonathan Summerton winds up with the points lead uh, on the strength of a seventh place finish here. Junior Strauss drops to second, James Hinchcliffe fourth, tied with J.R. Hildebrand. So an exciting fourth race. Unfortunately, it winds up under yellow. Coming up next, it's the Kansas IndyCar 300. Join us Friday, May the 22nd for the Firestone Indy Lights Freedom 100. Coverage begins at 11 a.m. Eastern time. For more information on IndyCar, log on to Versus.com. A crash-filled afternoon in turns three and four. Some tempers are running hot, but in the end, Sebastian Saavedra, the 18-year-old rookie from Bogota, Colombia, he winds up in victory lane, and so does that man, his team owner, Gary Peterson.